What is going on, Charles Botenston here, and today we're going to be moving on to health. I would say for the last, say, couple of months, I've been talking about psychology. I've been talking about mindset, and the reason being is that you can't actually change anything. You can't actually track anything. You're not actually going to stay on your path, your motivation. If you have no why, as Simon Sinek says, if you have no reason to actually do any of this. So I'm going to be talking about something that's known as, in my mind, the most important thing that you should be tracking. A lot of people say the amount of steps you do, how often you go to the gym, the amount of food, that, that's all fantastic. But the all encompassing thing that I look at is heart rate. First of all, it's obviously included in most everything, Fitbit, Apple Watch, you know, I have a Garmin right here. It, the band is, you know, kind of goes into the, the background of the screen. However, let's just go into it really quick. I have three metrics that I look at that my steps my heart rate which is 92 I would say that's about uh, it's a little bit higher than what I want granted I just shot a video I'm standing so you know 92 is probably within there you have a resting heart rate you have working out heart rate and then you have just higher end heart rate why is this important first of all let's just go into that why is it important the first thing is what is your heart your, your heart essentially is how it gets nutrients how it flushes things out of your body it also gives you a realistic idea of your arteries and your your veins and how the blood flow is obviously you could tell i'm not a scientist on this and i'm not someone that's actually going to say this is what you need to do but i can tell you right now when i have a high resting heart rate it's either because i'm stressed out i'm not working out i just ate a really big meal or i've been eating like shit. so in other words if you continuously put your heart rate and we'll talk about a couple of reasons okay the first one is you're working out a lot or you're not working out a lot okay if you're working out a lot so right now i'm working out a lot because i'm training for a, a triathlon over the course of a day i can see while i'm training it's going it's fluctuating between say 110 130 140 if i'm really pushing ass on the bike it's up to 150 i've had it up to 165. there's obviously maximum heart rates resting heart rate is really really important that's where essentially i know how healthy i am i also know that that if I'm overtraining. So if you have a resting heart rate in the 40s, that's really good. Okay, David Goggins is down in the 30s and really good athletes are down in the 30s. If you're in the 50s, that's fine. That's good. 60s, 70s, they say that's healthy. Listen, I can't say if it's healthy or not, but 60 or 70, that's really while I'm having just a casual walk. I'm moving. Resting heart rate essentially means that you're not moving. You're just, you're either sleeping, you're sitting down, you're at the computer, you're watching TV. There's no movement. You're just doing something. You're zoned in. You're not exercising. So the reason that that's important is your resting heart rate essentially says, how hard does your heart need to work to get blood from where it is to your toes, to your fingertips, and most importantly, to your brain. And if there's a constriction, which is your artery are clogged or your veins or anything else in your body is just it's it's a little bit tighter and I'll talk about a couple of reasons it's a little bit tighter your heart has to work harder your heart is a muscle if it ha if it has to work hard to get blood throughout your body that's not good when you're working out because that means you're gonna build up lactic acid which means you're gonna tire easier if your blood can't get to your all of your extremities that means that you're gonna be out of breath because maybe a little lactic acid but you're not getting enough oxygen to your muscles okay to your legs to your arms to your shoulders to your back whatever you're working on that day this is vitally important because you could you could probably prevent a ton of things I can see the future where everything is hooked up to your wrist everything is hooked up to maybe your uh, a monitor and then that's beaconed out and it says listen your heart rate has steadily been going up I'll give you an example there was probably about two weeks ago actually no last week where I decided to do a triathlon and I was simply sitting down worried about the triathlon my heart rate was over 100 beats a minute. 100 beats a minute, that's crazy. Okay, that's not good. When it's up to 100 beats a minute, that means you're stressed out, there's anxiety. I can see this while I'm sleeping. If my heart rate goes in the 50s consistently, that means I'm probably not getting a good sleep and I'm probably worried about something. So me actually tracking my heart rate when I'm obviously, you know, I have a coach and I'll talk about that in a second, but when I'm tracking my heart rate and I'm going to sleep, I'm sitting down, I'm making sales calls, I'm doing this video, or I'm working out, I understand where I am. And you actually want your heart rate going lower and lower a lot of people say and and this is the reason being is that i was out i was cycling with someone my heart rate was in the 160 okay we we're going up a hill i'm out of the saddle in other words i'm standing up i'm going up a hill it's a steep incline it's quite quite a far distance the guy to my right was at 135 he's at 30 beats less a minute who do you think's going to tire out that means oxygen is not getting to my muscles that means lactic acid is building up at a faster pace and that's going to exhaust me for him he's at 135 so guess what he did he finished faster and guess what he did he recovered faster because that means his muscles 
and his and oxygen are getting to to the extremities and he's able to actually recover and exhaust himself either during that race or tomorrow in other words he's he it doesn't take him any time to actually recover because he's able to just get through his muscles breaking down and building up here's another thing that david goggins actually talked about is that essentially the reason so he developed bumps on his neck and i think his back or his legs or something like that and he said why do i have this so he went back into seal training and they actually talked about that stretching was a massive part of recovery and i never thought of that i thought stretching was a, a great way to just not get injured it was a great way to make sure that your muscles are ready for the workout like five ten minutes before so there's a couple studies behind this they say that isometric which essentially is holding your muscle and holding a pose is not as good as just doing you know kind of like swinging your leg you know if you sit there and you hold your leg like this which my leg, I'm holding my leg behind, they say that's not as good as if you're swinging your leg and you're just getting it ready to actually go on a run, go on a hike, go you know, do a hit class, which is high intensity interval training. So what he said was, David Goggins said, is that he actually started researching it and someone brought up an incredible analogy, which is imagine your body's like a piece of meat, which essentially it is, that's what meat is, meat is muscle and fat, but essentially it's a, it's a piece of meat. And if you can't get blood flow through that piece of meat because it's too tight, because you're not stretching out, because you're not recovering properly, blood flow cannot get through. So essentially everything on his body, these big blocks on his neck and on his back were because blood couldn't get there. And it was the one on his back, I think was, was connected to his psoas muscle or something like that, which is connected to his T12, which is on your spine. The reason that he was getting tired blood and his heart was just going banana hammocks because blood couldn't get to the areas that were necessary because he wasn't stretching out. Stretching out is necessary. So once he started stretching out, he understood that, you know, this is going down, this is going down. And then he actually started to exhaust his body further and further. His heart rate went lower and lower because he's actually stretching out. All I wrote down was, I want to know my resting heart rate, which is essentially your resting heart rate depends on two things in my mind. Okay. I could be completely wrong, but two things. Number one is how mentally, where is your mind going when you're just sitting down? I'm not talking about when you have headphones or you're watching TV because you're just zoned in. But I mean when you're sitting down, maybe even reading a book because you're not getting stimulated. You're just reading a book or you're sleeping. Where is your resting heart rate? Because that's mentally where you are. Do you have stress? Do you have anxiety? Are you depressed? Are you happy and excited? Which means that your heart rate is going to be lower because your body isn't working towards anything. On the opposite end of the spectrum is that where's your resting heart rate? Because if you have a high resting heart rate, that means, and you've did a hard work, uh, say at class, or you need to recover, is that if you have a high resting heart rate, that means your body's really pushing itself to recover, and you should probably take maybe a couple hours, maybe a day off. I haven't reached that point, but I am monitoring it. Okay, you wanna see your heart rate going down. There's a couple of ways to actually do this. I know this is a long video, we're already at nine minutes. There's a couple ways to do this. Number one is nutrition. Okay, so when you eat shitty food and your body cannot break that down, it's obviously saying gluten, which is, I think, Greek. It's Greek or Latin for glue. Gluten is glue, okay? It's not something your body can actually break down. So bread, pasta, things like that, that include gluten, your body can't break that down. So it tries extra hard. Your heart tries extra hard to actually break that down. So nutrition is very important. Water is very important. And the reason water is very important is because your body, first of all, needs that. Second of all, it keeps everything flowing. It keeps your, uh, it, it exhausts anything through your skin that is not good, you know, like toxins. When I sweat, I don't smell. And the reason being is that my nutrition is on point and my water is on point. I drink uh, cold brew coffee and I actually smell it in my urine that I just had cold brew coffee. So if you smell during sweating, that means you're either stressed out, uh, which actually happened to me probably about six, seven months ago. I was sweating, I'm like, this smells weird. And the reason being is I think there's actually a evolutionary benefit for women to smell if a guy has a bad smell because she's thinking he doesn't eat right or he's stressed out or something else. And I was like, holy shit, is that when you release cortisol, which is the stress hormone, when you release that and it comes out through your clothes or your, through your skin and, you, and it's, it smells bad and it doesn't, it's not good. If, if women smell that, they're like, I don't wanna mate with this person because thousands of years ago, that could mean early death, which means that you have a high heart rate. I don't wanna go too deep into it, but you have to essentially know that water, which is any kind of liquid, soda, tea, coffee, uh, alcohol, 
Alcohol is not good. Poison. Your liver works extra hard to get those toxins out. Moving on is your mind. Your mind is, if you look at it, it's a pH level. Okay, so a pH level essentially is how acidic or how alkaline it is. So on the acidic side, that is stress, that's embarrassment, that is jealousy, that's also high fructose corn syrup, that's all the shit that is processed. Okay, on the other end of the spectrum, I don't know what's 14, so it's, a, it's zero out of 14. Uh, seven is that you're right in the middle and you have a pH scale, which is you wanna be on the, the green side, the colorful veggies and strawberries and things like that. I think, you know, there's still some acidic parts of it, but you wanna just have a lot of vegetables, that's good. Moving on is exercise. Okay, you want to sweat. You want to, there's a difference between aerobic and anaerobic exercise. I'm not gonna to go too deep into that. Essentially, you wanna fluctuate between there because if you just go on brisk, and obviously age makes a difference, if size makes a difference, injury makes a difference, but if you just go on walks, it's not really, it, it's good for your heart, it's all right. It's good for your body, gets things going. Your lymphs start getting sped up and moving around your body because when you're stagnating and you're sleeping, your lymph nodes cannot move around your body. The biggest thing is if you go and you are sweating and you are going through a workout and your heart rate is really high, you wanna see why. There's a couple of times that I'm on a bike ride and I'm like, why am I working way too hard for this hill right now? Like I, I then start going back and testosterone has a part to do that. It's if you have a higher portion of testosterone, you're gonna have bigger strength. There's fighters out there all the way to the millennia that knew that if you release testosterone, which is obviously you know sex or pleasure in yourself, that you're essentially losing your gift, which was given to you known as testosterone. If you're a woman, obviously it's estrogen, but as a woman, you also have testosterone. So as a woman, you have to try a lot harder. Obviously there is biological differences between men and women. If you're a guy, you have to understand that there's, you have the baseline, eat right, what do you intake, Which, where's your mind at, and do you exercise? Those are the four things. Track it and then see it over time. And I'm gonna tell you right now that my heart rate has steadily gone down as my sleep has gotten better, as my, I've dialed in my nutrition, I've drank, drank more water, and I've exercised. Literally, my, my resting heart rate, my actual workout heart rate has pretty much stayed the same. So I think I wanna bring that down. But this is the biggest thing to track. You wanna, you really wanna research your heart because it, it's all encompassing. It's all encompassing on your thoughts, your nutrition, your water intake, and obviously, athletically, what are you doing? So I hope this helps. Uh, I, I think I just blacked out. I don't know what I just talked about. Hopefully that was uh, something of use, but do research on that. And I can tell you right now, let's see, what was I at before, 92? I'm at 82 now. So I don't know if you could see it. It actually went down 10 beats. So my resting heart rate today, which is not good, is at 70. Actually, no, the last four hours is 70. And my high was 138. So actually 138 is really good because I was busting ass today. I was exhausted. It was probably one of the hardest classes that I went through. It's a hit class, high interval training, high, high intense interval training, whatever the hell it's called. Highly recommend you go check it out. So heart rate, check it out. Hopefully it keeps on going down. It's over time, obviously. And then you start dialing in things. How often do you sleep? How often do you rest? Do you rest too much? Do you eat like shit? Do you not drink enough water? Do you not sleep enough? Do you not meditate? Do you not go to the gym? It's everything. So have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon. And the last thing I'll say is that a higher heart rate consistently means that you're probably gonna die sooner than later, number one. And number two is that our bodies were not meant to be put under stress for multiple days. It was supposed to be a one-time thing, which is a lion is coming, your body goes into fight or flight, and then the lion leaves, and then you're fine. You're socializing, you're talking, you're eating, you're sleeping. That's how we grew up. That's evolutionarily our biology, okay? We weren't supposed to be stressed out about our finances or our relationship or our work for a multitude, multitude of days. Cortisol throughout your body, uh, it's not good. So have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.